Welcome everybody to our first uh, in-person uh, Hillcrest Online Cafe. I'm here with Jay and uh, we're recording upstairs in the youth room of our church. I've got my little mask on here and we're just going to be asking Jay some questions. Jay's been part of our church for the last while. He's become a good friend and uh, I really appreciate how he helps in our soul food group and just loving people whenever he can. So uh, Jay, I'd like to ask uh, some questions about your life. Maybe some people they see you helping or serving different times, but they have no idea about anything about you outside of church on Sunday morning. So you've worked a lot with your hands over the years. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've done in life? Uh, well, I pretty much worked with my hands most of my life, I guess. I've never, uh, I, don't, I don't remember trying to do anything else. I, uh, when I was 14, I started my own landscaping business. So I, uh, as far as the uh, what I've been doing for 30 years that led me here, um, I I started in Ontario when I was about 19, and I picked a concrete trade because when I was 16, I did a little work for a friend in a restoration business. Right, right. So I had a little bit of experience with that. So I, I went with that, and it just got into my blood. I, I found it very challenging. And a new thing every day. With concrete, you always end up on a different job site every day, and it's always a different kind of floor, different mix, different weather, different everything. So in order to get good at something like that, it's not, you, you're, not a, you're not a natural. You have to right. spend time. Time is what you need. So by the time I moved here to New Brunswick, I, uh, I'd had 15 or 16 years experience at that time, and I was a good troubleshooter. Yes. So when I got here, I, it was easy to get there's, there's two major companies here in St. John, and it was easy to get to the top. Yeah. Because I'd already had the experience, and I'd already seen a lot of things. So, yeah, it was, uh, it's been a pretty good experience for me, except for, I guess the only negative thing I could say was the damage that I've done to my lungs and to okay. myself. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I think it's been a great, a great ride, you know. So what's the fanciest thing you've ever done with concrete? Well, there's... Jeez, I could go on. How much time do we have? Oh, much as we need. <laughs> uh, I can just say a couple jobs that I remember. Uh, my, the Toronto Zoo was very interesting. We did a, a big pathway for pedestrians to walk through. The, I did an alligator cage. I helped do the. Uh, gor <laughs> I helped do the uh, gorilla habitat. There was a big mountain, and we had to stamp it. Yeah. We had to spray concrete on it through a hose, and then color it and stamp it for the gorillas. And I remember Charlie who just, he just recently died, he was in the news a couple of years ago, he was at that zoo, he was a big silverback, and at that time he had gotten into a, he got into a fight with um, one of the juveniles, oh. and the juvenile's tooth was embedded in his head, so they had to knock him out, and there wasn't enough staff, so they asked some of the construction guys, can you help us move Charlie onto this thing, so I, of course, yeah, I'll help, yeah, yeah. That guy's fingers were like this. Charlie's hands were so huge. That was an experience I'll never have again. And I never would have had that it, it, yeah. hadn't I been there that day to yeah. work at the zoo, right? That was fantastic. I'll always remember that. He was so big and so heavy, and his arms were, oh. Yeah, the was fur just, on his body coarse or soft? Oh, it's very, well, yes, both, yes. coarse and soft. Okay. His back was coarse, and his fingers were soft, but they were just massive. I, oh, couldn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe what I was doing at the time. It was like a dream. Yeah. I did uh, marine land, the whale tanks. That was a job that sticks out in my head. Um, lots of high rises all over Ontario. Lots of high rises. Um, I think the nicest things that we did was probably um, a lot of stamping. Stamping is, is very, very nice. It's very expensive. What, what's stamping? Is that like the uh, artisan side of things? Yeah, or yeah. You, uh, you know, rubber stamps that you can get different styles and different, you know, and you can color it different and then you put a sealer on it afterwards. It makes it nice and shiny like patios and walkways oh, okay. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And entrances and staining, doing all kinds of different, all kinds of different things. It's beautiful stuff. Very expensive. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Very expensive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that way it's been rewarding, but there's also the the other side of, you know, I kind of hurt myself over the years yeah, with that. Can you tell us a little bit, like, what, what happens to... Uh... Well, it didn't help that I smoked ah, yes. for a while. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, but uh, 
the powders and the grinding floor. Sometimes to do a decorative floor, you need to grind it first and get everything off it, right, or get right, all right. the tile off and all that stuff. So there's a lot of dust. And just recently, they've started be, being more demanding that you wear protective equipment, like a mask, like like a mask, for <laughs> instance, and safety glasses and stuff like that. So, uh, but during the course of my 30 years, you know, Nothing. you were a sissy if you had to wear a mask. Uh, and, you know, it, it, back then it was, you know. So that and smoking, I think I, you know, I'm I'm not complaining. I mean, I I, I didn't help myself at all by smoking, no. but at the end, it was a pretty stressful thing. Like being being a lead hand and being a, a boss type figure is uh, the more responsibility that you try to take on, the more they give you. Yeah, and, and then yeah. it starts to you know then it starts to play into your family life and into your sure. home life. You know, and then you know you're not home at all. So. Yeah, so there's good and bad, but I mean, I don't regret it. I mean, the only thing I, I guess, if I had to do it all again, I, would, I wouldn't I would smoke. Yeah. You know, because um, there's guys that have been doing it for 30 years, too, that are still still at it. And, uh, you know, kudos for that. So, yeah. Yeah. Lots of neat things. Yeah. So, you're in Ontario, you come to New Brunswick. How in the world did you ever wand, wind up wandering into the doors of Hillcrest? How did that happen? Well... I have my ex-wife, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I met you at a funeral. Um, my ex-wife's mother had passed. Yeah, yeah. And we needed a pastor to perform the service, and they suggested uh, just down the street here. Was that Cranons or um, Castle Funeral Homes? Right Castle there? Funeral Homes. Yeah, yeah they yeah. suggested that they suggested Andrew Morris. Okay. I didn't know any. I wasn't going to church at that time. I didn't yeah. know anything. So that's where I first met you. And uh, I could tell, you know, I'm not, I'm not kissing butt or anything, but I could tell when you were there that you were a caring person and that you were, you know, he's the guy. He's the guy for to do this. Yeah. And then I met you again when I got married. Yeah. And that's my, that was my first uh, step in, uh, into the church. That's neat. Yeah. And uh, Leanne said at the time that she knew you a little better than I did. I yes. Guess. Yeah. So she said, "Do you what you want to you want to go? You want to try?" And I said, "Sure." He seems like a great guy. Seems like a nice guy. So but yeah, let's go. And then from there, that was just it. I had to. This is it. I'm not going anywhere now. I just. Yeah. I love it here. I really do. I, uh, it just makes me uh, feel good. I like being around the people. Yeah. You know. I haven't always. Uh, I haven't always felt good around people. I mean, I can pick up on vibes and stuff. You know, yeah. we all can. You yeah. know, it's a it's a it's a defense mechanism. <laughs> you know, but I like it here. I feel I feel wanted and accepted. And you know, people ask me for advice for a change. And, yeah. You know, yeah, it's a great feeling here. Yeah. I, I like Hillcrest. Now you're serving in some different capacities, different ways. What's what's kind of your favorite way to serve at the church? Eating all the leftovers. Oh, happy day. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, well, I just, uh, right now, I mean, uh, I used to, back when I was working, I had money. Yeah. Now I don't. Uh, God has humbled me, and I'm in a different place now where I can't really, uh, I can't always give it in the offerings. So, I, like, I can once a month. Yeah. But the rest of the month, I, 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 I like to help Roger, who works in the kitchen. I like to help him out. Yeah. I, uh, sometimes I just do dishes. And, you know, people think that, oh, well, he's just a dish. Well, you know what? Try to wash a hundred dishes, a hundred <laughs> knives, a hundred forks, a hundred spoons, and set it all up and tear it all down and do yeah. it. That's work. It is. It's work. Huge. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in, in my mind, if I can do that for somebody, you know, to show that I care. Yeah. You know, sometimes things are better than money. Sometimes to help, just to help yeah. is better. Yeah. You know? I mean, originally the tithe was all about bringing produce and just the thing was to allow the yeah. priests to not have to work the farm so that they could... Minister Help other Lord. people. Yeah. Yes. You yes, don't have yes. to worry about that side of things. Because, right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And what do they say? Time is money. So, you know, when they asking someone about their pay, it's how much per hour are you right. getting paid? So well, it's, some it's, dishwashers make thirteen, fourteen dollars an hour. Right? It's true. So, well, now yeah. you get the experience. You could, you know, go up there and <laughs> build a concrete uh, rope. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Now, it's interesting too, right? We all kind of come to faith. A little bit differently. Some of us come to faith really quick, like we, we just feel God's presence, and we're like, "Yeah, this is real." Bang. Now your story is it's just uh, it's not that you didn't know God was real. It's just what well, can you 
talk a little bit about how you well, kind of... Yeah, I was uh, pretty much a statistic. I was a young kid, a foster kid. My mom died when I was very young. My father died when I was two. My mother died when I was six. Yeah. I ended up in foster care. And uh, before I go on, I, I just, I was lucky enough to stay with one family. I was, huh. and I think God had a, something to do with that because yeah. a lot of, a lot of foster kids, they end up getting shuffled. You know, and then they end up being a really bad statistic. They're the drug addicts and the people in jail and the, this and that because, you know, they, they have no love. They have no That's right. nothing. That's right. I was lucky enough that Judy put up, that was my foster mother, she put up with me. I was such an angry young man because I was on my own. I always so felt I was on my own. And uh, I just bless her for that. But, but uh, she was uh, Pentecostal. So, so, you know, you're living under my roof, you're going to Sunday school. Can we change this? Can we change this? Can I live under somebody else's roof? Yeah. No, no, that's not how it works. So, you know, about six years of Pentecostal. And uh, I didn't I didn't really like it as a young man. I was angry, like I said. And yeah. uh, so I'd go, I'd take the bus, and when I got there, I'd leave. Go play with some friends and stuff and make sure I caught the bus home. Yeah. But not every time. There was times I actually did go, yeah. you know. And I, and I started learning a little bit about Jesus and uh, the things that, you know, and uh, so I had some kind of background. By yes. the time I got here, I had a little bit of knowledge, you know, from Sunday school. Yeah. So the thing that always stuck in my head through my whole, even when I wasn't going to church and I, and I was just doing my own thing in the world, sometimes that question that the Sunday school teachers used to say, what would Jesus do? You know, and whenever I, I come up to a yeah. decision in my own life, I made a lot of bad decisions. But sometimes, I, you know, it would, what would Jesus do? It would pop in my head, and I would be like, oh, okay, well, not going to go that way. <laughs> you know. yeah, maybe not this time. Yeah, maybe not this time, right? Yeah. yeah. So that really helped me. I think Judy helped me uh, be aware that, you know, Jesus is real, and, and, and he's for you, and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so bless her. Yeah, thank you, Judy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So your faith, um, definitely a, a real part of your life. Um, how has your faith affected your life? Like, how have you seen it impact you, especially in the last few years? Well, uh, to be honest, if if the guy from five years ago was here, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd want to hang out with him. He did a lot of things that I I don't do now. Yeah. that I'm getting away from and it's still you know it's still rough at times sure. I mean uh, we talk about spiritual warfare and stuff like that and I've been put through the ringer a little bit in sure. the last few years I've been tested I think God is doing that on purpose he's like you know are you fooling around with me or <laughs> do you do you mean what you say right you know and uh, I'm having to I don't I, I don't think I have to do anything but my faith is is that uh, I'm starting to believe now that a lot, everything that's happened to me is I'm, I'm part of his story. Yeah. You know, yeah. I look back over everything and he's taken care of me. I'm still alive. And, you know, you've said it before too. You should have been dead a couple of times. Oh. And I totally believe I should have been dead lots of times. Yeah. You know, car accidents, drugs, all kinds of crazy things that I've done. You know, just I shouldn't be here. Yeah. How, how do you see your faith being expressed, uh, even with your family, I guess? Well, that's that's the biggest part. You know, I've learned that God's first and family's second. And uh, back when I was working, I'm not working right now, but when I was, I never had, it felt like I didn't have any time for the boys. And it was always at work and then at home, I only had a few short hours to be at home and I had to go back to work again. So I didn't really have a lot of time for anybody. And uh, he's turned my life around. I got all kinds of time right now. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm a different person, I believe I am. I mean, I used to have hair down here five years ago. You I used to have hair down here about ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, funny. Uh, but I'm mean, just saying that, like, with that person, I was making different decisions to spend sure. my my free time. You know, I was a bit of an alcoholic. And yeah. I was trying to trying to make myself go to sleep. Uh, you know, so I could yeah. get some rest. Yeah. Uh, anyways, all that's gone, and now I have more time to spend with the boys, and I have a couple grandkids now. Grandkids. Yeah. How many grandkids you got? Three. Three. Two girls and a little boy. Woo. Yeah. 
So now there's time to, I, you know, I'm only 51, but I kind of feel like I'm early retirement. Yeah. Which is good because I, knowing Jesus now and, and trying to get that to rub off on the boys, they're always around now. They always want to come visit. They always want to bring the kids around. Yeah. It's not the relationship we used to have. I heard you went golfing the other day. You know, that's uh, our... Well, it wasn't really golfing. It was uh, we were driving. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's much cheaper. It's only fifteen dollars a fucking so. Yeah, but we spent time together. We never used to do that. Now. You know, we get to go fishing and do stuff. And, that's awesome. Uh, you know, because I mean the other part too, right? You talked about early retirement and, and time with the boys again and kids and grandkids. Like when I first met you. You needed a double lung transplant. I still... You still do? I do, but yeah. they put me on the back burner, right. so to speak, because there's other people who... Uh, I, I don't know if I'm healing or if it's just things are getting better. I mean, I obviously quit smoking after that. Sure. You know, I had an episode where I almost passed away a couple of years back, and I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks because of my breathing, and, uh, you know, that did it for me, I was like, <laughs> but... I was there for two weeks, and they wouldn't let me out of that room. So I used that two weeks to get over the hump. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know, when, when they released me, you know, I thought, well, man, it's been two weeks. What are you doing? Here's your perfect opportunity. Let's be wise about this. Yeah. Don't go back. And I didn't, and I never looked back. And I don't, you know, that made a big difference. I bet it I did. mean, I still, I get lung infections three, four times a year. It's hard to do things. I can't, yeah. I'm, I'm out of shape now because I... Can't exercise the way I used to. I no. can't. But I'm a lot happier. I bet. You know, <laughs> it's I, I I could be negative and feel sorry for myself, but I don't. I, it's, I'm a lot happier. I'm better off where I am right now than where I was before. Unbelievable. I love it. I love where I am right now. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm a different person. A different guy. I feel better. Actually. Yeah. Into like I mean, my heart feels better. Yes. I always thought, not physically, but you know, mentally and in my heart, I feel a lot better emotionally. I mean, it's a new lease in life. Like, you're going to be able to enjoy your kids and grandkids. I hope, yes. So yeah. much more than you would have otherwise. Well, yeah, because <laughs> I, I wouldn't be around, and then I'd have to be selfish to try to get sleep. So I'd have to, you know, yeah. I, I didn't, I don't miss that. No, that not. No. So say there's somebody watching here today. You know, like, life's not perfect in that by any stretch of the means. But say they were struggling to come to grips with who Jesus was. Uh, you went through that. What would you say as advice to someone who's watching today that might be struggling with accepting Jesus as God or the personal Savior, or however the term is? Like, what would you suggest to them? Well, um, I would say it's a it's a personal. Don't listen to anybody else who is uh, saying that he doesn't exist or that he doesn't. Scoffers. The Bible likes to call them scoffers. Don't listen to those people. If you're having a feeling inside of you that something could be better. And you need something, then you just don't know what it is, and you're thinking about it. Don't hesitate. Life is too short. I mean, really, what if, what have you got to lose besides your guilt, and your baggage, your your shame? You know, all the stuff that you're going through. That's what you've got to lose. And what do you have to gain? You don't know what you have to gain because you're uneducated. Come and get educated. Check it out. Find out who he is before you make a decision. When you go buy something at a store and there's two things there, you do the research before you spend your money. Hmm. So if you're not sure what you want to believe in, do the research before you make an, make an educated decision. Don't listen to other people. Come and ask somebody who, who knows. Yeah. Somebody like you has been doing this his whole life. Your whole life you've been doing this. That's, well, I come to you when I need advice, when I need help. And I couldn't do that before. Don't don't sit on the fence. Get off the fence. Come, come and ask somebody who who is educated. Make an educated decision. Don't listen to your friends. Don't be part of the world. Be part of yourself. Yeah. Find out for yourself. Yeah. And then make a decision. That's what I would say. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're not we're not selling religion because religion no. leads to death. Like, no. for us, we're saving souls. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's exactly like we always want people to have a real relationship with Jesus Christ that leads to the abundant life. I'm not selling like, exactly. you know, Jesus still needs a double lung, a double, double lung transplant, and yet he's telling us his life is better than it was before and he was making lots of money and drinking. Like, like, we just, you know, 
I, I don't have my life to waste. I got things I want to do. If this was a waste of time, I wouldn't be doing it. That's right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. If, yeah. if it didn't make an actual difference in my life, yeah, why would I do it? Yeah. You know? So as we kind of come to the close, uh, I just wanted to know, Jason, was there anything you, you wanted to add, anything you wanted to share with us, like anything that's been on your heart or mind that you'd like to... No, I just, uh, for people who, like what we were just talking about, for the people who are sitting on the fence or don't understand, it's like a shedding your skin. Yeah. You know, um, your old skin is uh, it's no good to you anymore. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm grateful. And I think that's what I'd like to pray about today. Yeah. So my, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to still be alive. Yeah. You know. Well, maybe we'll get you to close us in prayer. And sure, yeah. sure. Let's do that. Prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for what happened here today with Pastor Andrew. I want to thank you for inviting me to Hillcrest and pushing me this way and changing my life. And I would just ask that you would set your hand on people who, what we were talking about, Lord, what we, people who don't understand who, who think they want to get to know you but they're not sure, could you rest your hand upon them and show them like you showed me? Bring them here. Bring them to somebody to help them. I just want to say that I'm grateful. I'm very grateful for the way you've changed my life. I'm very grateful for my Hillcrest family. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for my life. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jason. Yeah. Just realizing, you know, I've got this nice cup of coffee and, well, there's the <laughs> technical difficulties. So, anyways, I look forward to drinking my coffee afterwards. <laughs> uh, so this is our first time doing it this way. Uh, just we'll be trying to note some different uh, things in the next little while. You're welcome to join us for church on Sunday mornings at 1030 on Facebook. And we usually have a live premiere we are looking forward to having a live service October 25th. Um, so we're just working out the details on that. And uh, to every Tuesday at 2 p.m. we have a Bible study. And every 2 p.m. on Thursdays we have one of these kind of interviews. So you're welcome to join us for any of those things. Lord bless you, keep you, and cause his face to shine upon you even when you're wearing a mask. God bless. <laughs> Thanks, God bless. Jason.